With today's phone prices, the Nokia 7.2 is closer to the entry level end of the smartphone pool, which is actually saying a lot considering its feature set. At just over $300 from stores like Walmart and Newegg.com, you may find your needs met by the phone, which puts the okay in Nokia. I'll explain. Thank you for checking out this video. Please hit that thumbs up, get that subscription, clang that notification bell. You know, you can never have enough bell, cow bell, whatever kind of bell. This way you'll get the notifications whenever we drop a new video telling you about the latest gadgets or home services. So right now, the most important thing you need to know about the Nokia 7.2 is that it is an Android One phone. If you don't know what that means, you're going to get an Android phone, which is guaranteed to receive at least two years of updates to the Android operating system, which ensures you have the latest features and security improvements during that course of time. This also means you're not gonna get a bunch of carrier or manufacturer bloatware, so you'll be getting as close to the stock pure Google Android experience as possible, besides being a Pixel phone. The Nokia 7.2 ships with Android 9.0 Pi, but the official timeline for it to be updated to Android 10 is sometime in the first quarter of 2020. We'll see. So now that you understand what makes this an Android One device, let's take a look at the hardware and see if that helps you decide if it's the one for you. I'm reviewing the charcoal variant of the phone, which is also available in cyan green and ice. The phone is wrapped in Gorilla Glass 2.5D, which isn't the highest spec for Gorilla Glass, but it's okay. You'll get a 6.3 inch Full HD plus LCD display that's 1080 by 2280 pixels, which is this tall 16 by nine uh, aspect ratio. It does support HDR10, and I have to say that this is not a bad looking display at all. The phone is available with either four or six gigabytes of RAM. My version is the one with 128 gigabytes of internal storage and six gigabytes of RAM. The volume rocker and power button are on the right side of the phone. One of the design elements of the phone I enjoyed was that the power button doubles as a notification LED. It pulses and glows white when you have new notifications, but if you aren't feeling that, you can turn it off in the settings. On the left side of the phone, you'll get a micro SDXC slot, and depending on what you buy, you'll have either a single or dual SIM slot. Below that is the Google Assistant button, which I turned off as I always do because I have a tendency to activate it by accident often. Top of the phone, you'll find a microphone and three and a half millimeter headphone jack. Bottom of the phone, you'll find a mic, a USB-C charge port, and the speakers. The phone comes equipped with a 3500 milliamp hour battery, which Nokia says you should get two days out of, but I didn't find that to be true for me. With their adaptive battery technology, your battery life should get better over time, but initially my results were just mediocre with me hitting about 20% left at the end of my days, which should be obviously a lot higher if we're gonna get two days out of it. Let's talk about these cameras next. Uh, the front of the phone is where you'll find a 20 megapixel quad pixel camera, which takes some pretty solid portrait and standard selfies. Portrait mode can produce some very nice selfies with beauty mode activated, but that software-based background blur can be aggressive at times. As you can see in some of these photos around my beard and the sides of my forehead where the light blooms, where it hits. In addition to that, you get a pro mode on the front camera, which is something you don't see on many phones and something I am a big fan of. You'll also have some options to choose from in that front facing camera, which will affect how background lighting looks as it's blurred out. I played with this in a few different environments and I found that unless you have very specific lighting, this isn't gonna be a feature which you'll probably use all that often. The back of the phone, you're gonna get Zeiss optics for the 48 megapixel wide angle lens and an eight megapixel ultra wide lens. 
Additionally, you'll have a five megapixel depth sensor lens for effect. The images from the 48 megapixel lens produce photos with solid color reproduction, but in low light, they can be a bit noisy. As you can see in the sky, in these images I shot in downtown Los Angeles one night. Speaking of night, night mode on the 7.2 will definitely brighten up your images, but the overall noise I experienced with the camera is persistent there. The interesting difference I found in the photos in terms of noise was that the use of portrait mode seemed to produce deeper blacks with less noise in low light conditions. You lose some image sharpness by utilizing portrait mode, but as you can see in these image comparisons, you'll notice the deeper blacks of the bars while also seeing that the lettering and the signs aren't as sharp. Overall, the cameras produce images which I think most people will be happy with. If you're a photographer, looking for a solid point and shoot, you're probably not looking here anyway. If there's anything overtly negative to point out about the camera, it's that it actually has noticeable lag as you move through the different uh, modes and it isn't long, but it isn't instant like some competitors. The software experience with an Nokia 7.2 is actually better than OK. The fingerprint sensor around back, it worked reliably and consistently and the face unlock functionality uh, was fast and reliable as well. Though the phone uses the Snapdragon 660 chipset with Adreno 512 graphics processing, moving between screens and animations are smooth and fast. As a reviewer, I get to play with a lot of phones, many of them high-end flagship models. So using this phone, you do notice that it isn't quite as fast as some costing hundreds more. But we also have to remember, I think, that the average user doesn't have as many phones go through their hands in a phone like this, which may seem slower than others, still moves at a clip fast enough that you aren't gonna be waiting for apps to launch. It isn't instant, but it ain't 56K dial-up either. You've got mail. The overall interface uses card-based design language. This is an Android One device after all. So swiping from the bottom to the top uh, of the navigation bar dot will open up the app drawer when you're on the home screen. And going only a quarter of the way up brings you to the app switcher, which also shows you five recently launched apps on the bottom of the screen. Moving between apps in the app switcher is lightning fast, Pressing the home button takes you back to the home screen. Swiping left to right also switches you between apps with wonderful quickness. This phone does not have raise to wake, but does have tap to wake, which I found to be hit or miss. I'll chalk that more up to muscle memory on my part than anything because these tap to wake phones have a rhythm to them. And it could just be me getting used to the cadence, which will wake the phone consistently. When getting into the notification shade options and the menu options, you'll find that there isn't a whole lot to look at. Some phones allow you to customize everything to the nth degree, but you're not really gonna see that with this phone, with the Nokia 7.2. I don't think that's a negative though. Some folks don't wanna spend all their time playing with icon shapes and colors and that's okay. One oddity in the menu with this phone though, and this is, you see this in a lot of Android One uh, stock, close to stock Android phones, is when you switch to dark mode, the menu stays white. Notifications shade goes dark automatically, but that's it. When in the display settings, it allows you to change the theme to the dark theme, emphasis on the word theme, shouldn't that mean that everything else on the system level is affected? Nope. Want dark mode in your messages app? You have to enable it. Phone dialer, enable it. Chrome, enable it. And therein lies the disconnect. This is an Android One phone, but it is still a Nokia device. So some system apps follow suit with changes while others which seem like system apps due to the lack of bloatware and Nokia OS enhancements, well, those others may seem like system apps, but they're Google apps. And you'll have to go into each one one by one and turn on dark mode. Definitely hashtag first world problems. But I'm a reviewer. I review. I critique. I've made you aware of this. My job is done here.
Okay, okay. Maybe not. Maybe not. So, okay is in the middle of Nokia, and that kind of says it all for this device. It's pretty much stock Android with no user interface enhancements, and for those who don't want to spend their lives customizing their phone, that's okay. Photos overall are okay. Battery life for me so far has been okay. But at around $300, your bank account will be okay after you buy this phone. Instead of nagging you for spending money you didn't really have on a phone with 300 features you aren't really going to use. Okay? Hey, I'm Tashaka Armstrong. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I will get to them. Love answering the questions. We don't take it lightly that you've watched this review or any other on our channel here. So thank you for watching. This has been Tashaka Armstrong for reviews.org.